You woke up in the morning, you just don't feel like getting out of bed. It's a bad day. Well, stay with me on this video. I will share with you three very powerful tactics that I use when I encounter bad days. And I'm sure you too have them on a regular basis. It's just the nature of life. And how do we interact with those bad days really dictates how we can overcome them and actually use them as a process to grow as we continue. So my friends, welcome back to my channel. In these videos, I share with you certain tips about how to deal with day-to-day -day life, how to deal with transformation, and really how to pursue transformational goals. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos, I talk about my 1000th day goal. And this is really a transformational goal on multiple areas. But today I really want to focus on something that some of you have asked me multiple times already. What do you do when you just have a bad day? How do you actually manage to turn it around? So here are my three most powerful tactics that I have used and my clients use. And it's something that if you can start and get more into be aware about what are the triggers for those bad days, it will be easier for you to work with them, okay? So, tactic number one. This is gonna be transformational, okay? <laughs> a bad day can be just a bad day, okay? This is life. Not every day is gonna be great. Not every day you're gonna have the energy that you want. Not every day you'll, you know, bounce out of bed with, with the enthusiasm and the uh, anticipation of doing what is what is that you need to do. It's just the nature of life. So sometimes when we just accept a bad day as a bad day and you can work around uh, your activities, your commitments for the day to just do basic things, right? Just manage the day, give yourself a break. This comes back to the subject of self-love and self-acceptance. In the past, for myself, for example, a bad day would come as criticism, as self-blame, self-shame. You're not good enough. You should do this. You should do that. What's wrong with you? That self-talk is very, very aggressive, and it can actually lead to exactly the opposite. It can lead to a deterioration and spiraling down into depression. It can lead into demotivating yourself in a way that you're just going to get completely off track. So sometimes acknowledging that a bad day is just a bad day, accepting that, work around that, and just give yourself some grace and be okay with that for the day. That's a powerful tactic that I can tell you for most of us, especially the high achievers here that are watching this video, is very difficult to implement because you are looking for what is wrong. What could be wrong? A thousand things. But as long as it's one day and it doesn't happen that often, sometimes a bad day is a bad day. Accept it, work around it, and move on. Okay? Tactic number one. Tactic number two is to go back and retrace what was the trigger for that bad day. Usually a bad day doesn't just happen because you woke up on the wrong side of the bed or uh, something just triggered you first thing in the morning. Although that can be the case. If, like most of us, you woke up in the morning and the first thing you did, you reached out to your beautiful device, that day is kind of screwed already. Why? Because you invited into your world everybody else's agenda. Now, if you check your email, if you check your text messages, if you go on social media, if you read the news first thing in the morning, it's kind of a game over for you because everybody else now will dictate your reaction to the day versus taking time for yourself, set the tone and the environment in which you can actually deal with what will come into your life that day. But if you don't do that, it's a difficult position to be in. So tactic number two is if you do wake up and you feel that the day is off, avoid going straight into your inbox, check your text messages, WhatsApp, or check the news or go on social media, pause. Take some time and maybe journal, maybe meditate, maybe do some breathing exercises, but do them in a guided manner. Meaning, ask yourself questions while you do that. What could have triggered this emotion, this state I'm in right now? For me, many times when I trace what triggered a bad day, I can see that the day before something happened. Maybe something happened at work, at home, with my kids, with my wife. In general, for me, something that I really wanted to uh, 
achieve or pursue just is not going the right way that I wanted it to. But at that particular time, I wasn't really aware of the impact that it has. Now, what happens is when you go to bed and you sleep, there's a processing uh, period that your mind goes through. And sometimes it can come up in your dreams. Sometimes it can just be an unconscious process. But when you wake up in the morning, the residue of that process is still there. And sometimes that creates this condition of you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You just feel that it's a bad day. You don't have the energy, the enthusiasm, and you just don't feel like doing anything. So it can be related to the day before. Pause, reflect, be more inquisitive and curious about what could have caused that for you. I find many times that it's related to something that happened the previous day or the previous night or could be even before that. And it just took some time for me to process it and all of a sudden it hit me in the morning. Because usually for most of us, anywhere between 4 and 6 a.m., there is a conscious process, like the mind begins to work and sometimes you wake up, sometimes your dreams are more vivid during that time. And when you do wake up, even if you don't remember what you dreamt about or kind of these things that were going on uh, in your head overnight, they are present and you don't really know what's going on, right? Because there was a cut when you woke up. If you didn't wake up naturally, if you woke up, you know, with an alarm clock or somebody woke you up and you were in a deep sleep state, then you're rattled and you just can't make the connection. So tactic number two is pause before you start the day. You know this when you wake up, how you feel, right? And if there's something off, take a few minutes to yourself, for yourself, and read, meditate, journal, visualize. Take some time to understand and look back what could have happened that triggered that particular situation, okay? So that's tactic number two. Tactic number three is be careful, okay? A bad day, when you allow it to take over and it becomes two bad days, three bad days, four bad days, maybe five bad days, this is outside of just a regular bad day. This could indicate that something much more serious is going on within you. Now, if you're prone to depression, like myself, if you find that from one day to the next, it's the same energy, it's the same lack of enthusiasm, it's just you don't feel like doing anything, be aware of that. Two days for me is kind of the red line. If I woke up one day and okay, it was a bad day, I accept it, I worked around it, moved on. If on the second day I wake up the same, something is much deep, something deeper is going on. And my advice for you is to really look into what it is. And by journaling, you are able to actually track back what's going on, right? Has it happened two days in a row, three days in a row? When was the last time you felt that? Now, if the proximity between these events is too close, then we might be looking at something more serious for you. And this is where my best advice is, go and seek professional advice, right? If this is a pattern, if it's coming again and again and again, don't try and resolve it on your own. Don't try and say to yourself, you know what, this is nothing serious. If for the last month you've had, you know, 10, 12 bad days, some of them in a row back to back, there's something deeper going on. We can't just brush it under the rug and say, you know, this is nothing because there is something. My best breakthroughs were when I raised my hand and asked for help which is really, really difficult for most of us, especially high achievers, especially individuals that are kind of trying to figure out life on their own, raising your hand and say, hey, I need some help, I'm stuck, I don't know what's going on, is probably the most difficult thing for you to do. So my advice is be more, be easy with yourself, right? And accept the idea that somebody else can really help you. And it's not shameful, it's not because you're weak, none of that. It's just understanding that our, there are professionals out there from therapists, psychologists, coaches, whatever it is that you can relate to and connect to because there's an element of trust that has to be built between the two parties in order to open up and start and discuss things that uh, keep you up at night or things that repetitively you think about all the time and every time you are triggered by them, the same behavior patterns arise, right? And it could be that you... Um, find yourself emotionally eating, overeating, right? Again and again and again. 
or you just don't feel like getting out of bed and you try and avoid people and you just send a text message in the morning, I'm sick, I don't feel good, I'm not going to show up today, but that's repetitive. And then you start to hide your behavior. That is really a serious red flag, right? When you try to portray to the outside world, your family, your siblings, your partner, whatever it is, that you're okay, but really you are not. And then you just start to try and stay away from people, right? And hide and not participate in life. If that happens again and again and again, it's time. Ask for help. That's uh, something that can really, really get you out of that cycle. And what happens is, is that you start to see your own patterns and your own thoughts and certain events that happened in your life. You know, I went through a lot of trauma, physical and mental car accidents, amputation, heart attack, all sorts of things, you know, immigration, divorce, you name it, you know, almost bankruptcy. There were a lot of stuff that I had to deal with. That creates patterns which are very, very deep. And sometimes on our own, we can't see the groove that was created and it, you know, followed by specific worldviews, specific patterns of thought, specific patterns of behavior, specific patterns of self-abuse even, right? We cannot see them. We need someone from the outside to be a mirror to us. And that's what a good coach, a good therapist, a good psychiatrist uh, can do for you if you find someone that you can trust because they help you reflect and show you your behavior patterns, what's going on, and understand how to work with them, okay? All right, my friends, if you like this content, you know, subscribe to the channel, share it with some other people in your network, and if you have any specific comments, your experience on what's going on with your life, how you deal with a bad day, add them in the comment here. It's always great to uh, converse with you guys. I appreciate the time we spend together here, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.